with longrangeonly.com and in this video we're going to talk about the Zeiss LRP S5. This one's the 5 to 25. And let's just dive right in. We've had this for quite a while. Uh, it gets frustrating I think to a lot of people, but we or I really pride myself in taking the time to actually put these things through the test. I don't just go out there and shoot it a couple days at the range, twist the knobs a few times, do tracking, and then call it, a, call it a review. That's just not, in my opinion, what it takes to get these things reviewed. Um, I'm just gonna start right off with the tracking. I see a lot of people doing tracking tests, target tests, and that type of stuff. And I have yet to see a scope over seven or eight hundred dollars and definitely over a thousand dollars that didn't track consistently now I, I do recommend that you as as the user would do a tall target test and actually see what the clicks relate to because sometimes if it's a one minute or a quarter minute per click you don't always get exactly that and especially as you go over say 30 minutes it may be off a little bit but the ballistic calculators today can take care of that for you but as far as repeatability I haven't found one yet that won't repeat at least in that first you know 90 days which would be the typical industry standard for reviews I haven't seen one fail after time but if they were going to that's when they would so that short-term review doesn't really do a lot of good I'm not going to talk about the specs we'll put them up here but we're going to talk about generally about them you know this is a 36 ounce scope it's a 34 millimeter main tube and it's a pretty large scope I would put this in the same class as like an ATAC R from Night Force. Um, and then the others, there, there are several other options from several other manufacturers uh, that would be in this class. Now, this scope is really intended for uh, competition like PRS and that type, of, that type of competition. It does boast 140 minutes of angle elevation, which is absolutely insane for those that need it and uh, the other features that are going to set this apart from other scopes i think is what people are going to be mainly interested in it has in my opinion what zeiss has been known for it has some of the best glass in the industry this is the top of the line glass from zeiss it's beautiful it has high contrast 90 percent light transmission the glass is definitely not going to leave the snobs wanting Again, I don't really place a lot of value on the, the glass. I've never had glass cause me to miss and miss or miss an opportunity. So it's not at the highest of my priority list, but a lot of people it is, and this is at the top of the line. Okay, it's got the typical Zeiss diopter adjustment back here. It's very smooth, it stays in place. It is my favorite style of diopter and this is implemented very well. It's not gonna accidentally move on you. It's got a very smooth zoom ring and unlike the S3, this doesn't have a spot to put a throw lever, uh, but they do sell an accessory that goes right on there and is very, very usable. I don't think it's implemented quite as well as the S3 because for a right-handed 90 degree bolt action when it's at the low version or low power it's not it's going to be in the way but I personally prefer that if there ha if it has to be in the way somewhere I personally prefer it on the low end over the high end so over here on 24 power for a right-handed shooter it's going to be out of the way the turrets are very tactile I don't think they're gonna leave any one wanting they're very similar on the s3 and the s5 which is a little bit different than the older Zeiss scopes I really can't think of anything that they directly compare to but they're very audible and they're very tactile and, and uh, they're definitely probably in the top five of my favorite clicks and I know a lot of people are very uh, it's a personal preference and a lot of people care a lot about them. I don't think that you would dislike these. I, I think they're a great implementation of a turret. The windage is lockable, which I 
Uh, the more and more I think these scopes start to come out with a lockable windage turret, uh, you're going to hear me talk them up quite a bit more because I just love that feature. There's really no reason to make a new scope today I, in these price ranges, you know, the $2,000, $2,500, $3,000 price range and, and up where the, the windage turret's not lockable. I just don't think it's excusable anymore. It needs to be implemented into everyone's design. There's too many times where you don't necessarily need to make a wind call. And when that happens, a lot of people don't go through that uh, shot process, including the wind. We could argue whether or not you should, but it could cause a miss if the windage moves. And this is definitely going to help you eliminate that. Uh, the parallax adjust knob is very smooth. It, it might be a little stiffer than some others, but it's not too stiff and it's not going to accidentally move on you. The illuminated reticle is another feature of this scope that they're proud of. It's a lot more usable than a lot of other uh, illuminated reticles in the day when it's bright. It doesn't bleed through. Now you can get it all the way up to the brightest setting and have it bleed a little bit, but you can just dial it down. So it's you, the, the way you use it is you pull out on the illuminated uh, knob over here, which sets just outside the parallax and I'll do some close ups, close up video shots of this, but you pull out and then you just adjust the rheostat. And again, for illuminated reticle use, this is how I think it should be. I, either the clicks, which are get brighter as you do separate clicks, or a rheostat that can be turned off easily. I don't like the push button stuff. This pull out, pull, <clears throat> push back in. It's very uh, tactile and you know when it's gonna be uh, turned off so it's not accidentally left on. And I, I think it's a great illuminated reticle implementation. I'll drop in some pictures of the reticles. I think the reticles themselves are very usable. This scope is in MOA as that's my preference and it is a first focal plane scope. It's, it's very usable and it's one of my top favorite reticles. It, it, at first I didn't really know how I was going to love the numbers in it, but the more, the more I use this, both this and the S3, the more I like it. Um, if you're going to do a windage hold, there's no counting. You just hold off the minutes are over there in the number and you just you make your shot and you're good to go. The zero stop on this is probably, I have mixed feelings about it. It's probably my favorite type of zero stop. A lot of the other turrets out there or zero stops out there are copying something very similar to the Night Force that has been around since the NXS and in my recollection was the first zero stop. There may be others that beat it, but that's the first one I remember. And most scopes today are using some copy of that where you take the cap off and you rotate the little ring that has a tab and then set it back down. And that's fine if you're messing around uh, when you change scopes from or change to a different rifle or whatever that's fine. If you need to adjust the scope up, you just adjust it up, get the zero set, take it off and reset the zero stop, put it back down. But it's kind of a pain if you need to go down because then you have to take the scope uh, turret cap off. Then you have to back the zero stop out of the way, put it back and then dial the scope down and then set the zero stop. And it just takes a little bit longer. This is not the most uh, intuitive zero stop uh, because when you're setting it and, and the zero stop is detached from the scope turret uh, as far as uh, actually moving the turret it still has that tactile feel so it's confusing it makes you feel like it's moving the reticle when it's not but I can assure you if you just follow the directions which we're not going to get into in this video if you just follow the directions it's one of the easiest zero stops to use and I really like it whether you're going up or down it's it's super simple to set now like I said it's not as intuitive so you'll probably if it's been a while you'll need to look at the instructions to accomplish the setting the zero stop if you set it all the time obviously it'll be second nature to you but I think it's probably my favorite way to implement a zero stop, which when you 
add all this up, it makes it one of the best scopes, if not the best scope in this style. Like to me, for my hunting rifles, it's a little bit too big. I'm probably not gonna throw this on one of my hunting rifles. I don't like those uh, heavy scopes, generally speaking. But then when you couple it with the larger size, it's probably not something I'm going to take hunting. But for a ELR rig, a long range rig, a, a competition rig, this is gonna be an awesome scope. Like I said, the zero stop, the great glass, the illuminated reticle is one of the best implementations of an illuminated, illuminated reticle out there. The locking windage turret, the great glass makes it a great scope. So I think we've covered all the, the big pieces or important parts of the scope. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Who I think this is for. So I'm going to rehash some of the things I just said. You've got a good... A diopter here, a great implementation of the illuminated reticle. Parallax adjust knob is super smooth. 34 millimeter tube, a smooth zoom with a 5 to 25 power. Some of the best glass out there. Great contrast, good light transmission, and just the clarity is, is up there with the best of them. Great turrets. Lots of elevation adjustment, uh, one of the best, if not the best, zero stop uh, mechanism out there. Locking windage turret, and the windage turret is on par with the, the elevation turret as far as clicks. The only downsides would be, to me, a little bit heavy and a little bit big, but for who it's intended for, the competition ELR uh, or long range shooter, it's going to be one of the best, if not the best, scopes out there. And I think that's what Zeiss was going for, to step up their game and get into that market with the ATAC-R, the Collis scope. Uh, some people would argue the Leupold Mark V HD, which I'm not a huge fan of. But this is going to get them into that market. And I think if you're looking for a scope for one of those uh, things that I'm, I just mentioned, long range, ELR, uh, competition stuff. You definitely got to look at the Zeiss LRP S5. Again, this one's the 5 to 25, which would be my zoom ratio preference. It's one of the best out there. If, if you're looking for something to fit that bill, then this is the scope you need to look at. We'll have a link to a thread on the forum in the description below. You can head on over there, ask me any questions. If you're not a member on longrangeonly.com already, it's quick, it's free, it's easy to set up. An account and we would love to have you there. there's lots of great information you don't need to have an account to to go uh, read any of the content that we'll have in relationship to this but to participate we would love to have you sign up please like the video subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you can be notified of future videos um, we appreciate you taking the time to watch have a great day